Have you ever been thinking about what the worst kind of praise is that you could give? If so, I guess here's an answer. At least I hope it is because I actually don't know. Um, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics fucking podcast. And as always, I'm pretty fucking pumped to be here again. Uh, actually, the second episode of the day. Why are there two episodes on a Thursday? Because actually, I do have holiday. Like, it is one holiday tomorrow. No, actually, yeah, tomorrow I do not also have to go to school. And yeah, the, the next or the following week is going to be just pretty normal. And the week just following, so after the, the next week, uh, I do only have to be in school on... Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday. So actually, I do have holidays or vacation, if you actually can say this, I don't actually know, on Monday and Tuesday, which is great, which is totally great. But this is not why I'm actually making this fucking episode. We are going to talk about, and I'm pretty dark, actually. Um, we are... Why? Uh, it's the right one. Okay, uh, so we are going to go through this article, this one, from the ideas.tet.com website. Why am I just going through an ideas.tet.com website article? Because I think it's a great article and also because I do not want to just go through another part of um, yeah Ray Dalio's principles, even though, you know, it's a pretty fascinating and a pretty great book. Um, I do just somehow, I'm, I'm really feeling like I want to just talk about what I think about certain things and not primarily about, uh, yeah, about the things that are discussed at the moment in the book. Somehow, I guess, I don't fucking know. Let's just start. So what's the worst kind of praise you can give? One hint, it often ends with the letters E-S-T and it can lead to comp competition and disappointment, says psychologist and workplace researcher Sean Aker. I guess I've even gone through one of his books. I guess. I guess at least. So some people treat praise like a limited commodity. They believe that the key to advancement and success must be to absorb and rack up as much recognition and admiration as possible. And this is the philosophy we learn in school, then hone to brutal efficiency in the working world. Yet, what these people fail to recognize is that praise is actually a renewable resource. <laughs> what? It is actually a renewable resource? I didn't fucking know that. It's not like, you know, you can just, you know, praise everything, everybody, everything that everybody is doing. Let's see. So, praise creates what I call a virtuous cycle. I've been talking about virtuous cycles for so long, I guess. And they are literally in every fucking book. But I still don't know what virtuous even means. Okay, I still don't know. <laughs> because I don't know the fucking German word. Or at least I don't know one I don't know what I should do with it. So the more you give, the more you enhance your own supply. When done right, praise primes the brain for higher performance, which means that the more we praise, the more success we create. And the more success there are, the more there is to praise. So it's, ah, okay, I understand. Now it's a vicious cycle. It's like it's never ending, but it's not a bad thing. Like, it's a good cycle, you know, which, yeah, I think it's just the, the characteristic of a cycle that is not, or circle actually, that it is not ending quite. But, um... But yeah, so the research I've been doing over the past five years shows that the more you can authentically shine praise on everyone in your ecosystem, the more your potential individually and collectively rises. So the more your potential individually and collectively rises. Oh my fucking God. And I still think that praising people, I'm going to have to talk about something. And I really think that I do just have to go through how to win friends and influence people from Dale Carnegie on the alanjang.com website because it's an amazing website. It really is just amazing how detailed he uh, he's actually doing his summaries. You know, they're just endlessly long, just at least they feel like this. 
and but still they are so fucking detailed and I would I would even say sometimes that you only have to go through one of his summaries to actually know what's going on in the book for some it might not be the case for some it might be but you know it always depends on the book it always depends on um, and your author as well but he said in his book how to win friends and influence people which is one of the books that I even though you know I'm, I'm quite often thinking about what books that I, I really love and one of the books that I sometimes even forget is how to win friends and influence people but yeah um, so in his book he actually pointed out that he doesn't understand quite or it is just funny that a lot of people praise certain things and these certain things for example are every singular fucking step of a baby you know, no matter what a baby is doing, you're praising it like crazy, you know, and it's, I think, the same thing with children, not only with babies, but the thing is, why does it then stop when, when we all are adults? Why does it stop when we are in work, when we are in school? Why does it then just stop? Why don't we praise everything our teacher does? Why don't we praise everything that our fucking co-worker does? The thing is, I don't know. I really don't, but I quite don't understand it, like, why, you know, as I'm thinking about it, it doesn't make any fucking sense, why are we praising every single fucking step a baby is doing, but we are praising quite nothing that just everybody else is doing, <laughs> like, really, we are not even praising, like, sometimes, we're not even actually praising when somebody's doing something that's so amazingly great, even though we think, yeah, this is amazingly great. We still are like, okay, you know, yeah, we're still giving a fuck about it, which is just, yeah, bullshit. It's really bullshit. But let's see what he's also saying. I'm now getting pretty blue. Now I'm not blue. Now I'm pretty blue. What the fuck? Um, I'm really fucking blue right now. Does this help? Does this make anything better? Not at all. Well, um, yeah, uh, I know I'm not the first to 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 what to toot praise, which means to hawk, offer to sale, push, floor, advertise. Oh, and how is it pronounced? Tout. Port. Tout? Never mind, it's T-O-U-T. Praise is benefits. And I'm willing to guess that most people recognize that praise is invaluable. The problem is most of our business, businesses, schools and relationships isn't just that we fail to praise enough. It's that we have been praising the wrong way. I would go so far that to say that our current model of praise uh, demotivates our teams, ex ex uh, exacerbates internal strife, in our families and places a cap on our potential. Well, this sounds pretty promising that he's actually going to tell us what uh, is actually then the, the best way to praise somebody, to really fucking praise somebody. By telling someone they are better or the best, you are placing a limit on, our, on your expectation for what they can achieve, which makes sense, which basically then means... If you're really saying to somebody, you are the best. Does this then really mean that this person isn't actually able to get better? Like, like you know, I'm just assuming. I'm just, you know, yeah, this is what I somehow hear by him saying that. So by telling someone they are better or the best, you're placing a limit on your expectation for what they can achieve. Yeah, or it's just like, okay, you know, I'm just thinking like you are the best right now, which means that, you know, no matter how good you're going to get, I'm still going to say like you're the best, you know, like before. I think, yeah, I guess he's saying that. So the worst piece of praise I've sometimes received after talk is you were the best speaker today. What's so bad about that? Question mark. First of all, it undercuts all the other speakers. Moreover, it reminds me of the fact that, it, that in many other cases, I won't be the best speaker. 
So now I feel nervous and self-conscious. Instead of enhancing me, this comment unbalances me in the future. Maybe just the speakers or he is then thinking like, okay, you know, I want to be the best next time as well. And when I'm not, I'm feeling bad about myself because my, my performance just, yeah, went away. Like, or was gone. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> never fucking mind. Um, so what are you actually doing here is comparing and not praising, which is actually true. And I would, and I just really want to uh, underline once again that you're really then fucking with the other speakers. And so maybe somebody is listening. Maybe some of the other speakers is listening and maybe you're even the moderator uh, or commentator of the whole show, of the whole kind of um, seminar or of the whole event. And if you're really then on stage being to, to one of the speakers like, okay, you've been the best of, all, of, of them all or you were the best on here, then what you're saying is pretty much that all the others were shit. And I guess this is not the best thing to do. You know, especially if, you are the organizer of the whole thing, like, the other ones won't come to you again, like, you know, you're fucking with them, like, you're just really being not that nice to them, but let's see what to actually do, um, what, uh, what you're actually doing here is comparing and not praising, you are attempting to prop people up by kicking others down, real praise is telling someone your report was amazing, or the comedic timing of your speech was perfect, not telling them that their report or their speech was better than other, other persons. Moreover, by telling someone they are better or the best, you're placing an unconscious implicit limit on your expectation for what they can achieve. If we are striving only to be better than someone else, doesn't that set our expectations for ourselves too low? It tells us that as soon as we are just a little bit better than other person, we can stop trying, even if it means stopping short of our potential. Which I get what they say, and or what he says actually, and it really makes sense. Like, then you would just only be trying to be better as everybody else. But this doesn't mean that this is your full potential. It's mal it merely means that you yeah, you're better than than everybody else and you're not trying to be your best like like yeah you know you're only trying to be the best in the room you know and then it also depends on you know who is in the room like if there is bill gates in the room and you're trying to be the richest in the fucking room it's gonna be a little bit harder like he's fucking rich and if there's a fucking homeless in your in your room you're gonna stop because you understand okay you are now the richest person in the room and there's no way why you should actually work further on because you are the richest man in the room if this was your only goal. I understand where he is going and I hope I'm not just kind of confusing you with what I'm saying. So if you want to enhance others, do not compare them. This has been one of the hardest lessons for me to write about because I thought... Uh, I was intuitively praising others, including my wife and son. But no matter how good your intentions, if you ex uh, excitedly say to a child, you were the best, uh, you were the best one out there, you just taught them that your, that your love and excitement were predic uh, predicated on their position compared to others. Nothing undercuts big potential, the success, uh, the success you can only achieve in a virtuous cycle with others more than comparison praise. The easiest way to stop comparison praise is to eliminate superlatives like the best, the fastest, the smartest, and the prettiest. I quite understand, even though I'm going through it qu quite quickly and I should actually kind of be a little bit, a little bit more slow to actually uh, be able to talk a little more but it's a pretty long article, so I'm gonna just have to hurry up a little bit. Uh, I know where where he is heading, actually. Um, it is really like a comparison. And you might know that comparing yourself to others is quite bullshit. And so I think it's it's the same thing with actually comparing your child to other people's child. Like, 
we are still all individuals. We're still all thinking differently. We are still all having a different family and different resources and different abilities and different characteristics and different everything. So, like, yeah, you know, I think the best thing is to to kind of compare yourself with yourself. Like, for sure, there's going to be someone who is worse than you. And for sure, there's going to be someone that's better than you. Completely. Like, I think there's nothing to debate about. You know, if you're just, you know, Bezos, there's nobody who is richer than you. Like, yeah, you've won it. You really have won it. But um, I'm not Bezos. Maybe you're Bezos. I don't know. If you're Bezos, hi, Bezos. Hope you're doing well. Um... But but I understand him. I understand him. And I'm just thinking, if it would have been better if you tell your son, okay, you know, you've been been way better than uh, than the last time. If it is really the truth, and this is what I think is very important to actually be truthful, not saying something because you want to say something, saying like, okay, you know, you were good because this person was good and not only because you feel like praising somebody even though I still think you can always find something where you honestly and truly can say okay you know this is something that I want to praise whether it be just one kick or one shoot in terms of actually your boy playing soccer if it was one I don't know throw when it's about football you know like there's always something to praise there always is, you know, quite always. And I, I think you just always uh, or only have to look for it or search for it. And I guess uh, then you can actually find it. So think how often we fall for the comparison trap. You are the hottest, smartest, funniest person in this room. Why do we have to dim- diminish everyone else in the room in an attempt to praise one individual? Comparison praise feeds into the small potential, the limited success that you achieve alone, mentally, that success, leadership, creativity, beauty, love, or anything else that we care about are limited resources. When you tell a group of people that only a certain percentage of them can be successful, you're damaging everyone's drive and ambition. Which is actually true. And I do not quite understand why often people point that out. Like, you know, only the best come through. Like, yeah. Well, okay. You know, this was just, you know, common sense. Even though, or before you've said it. Like, I don't know. I understand it. I, 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 I don't know. I just understand it. Uh, the easiest way to stop comparison praise is to eliminate superlatives from your vocabulary vocabulary <laughs> uh, vocabulary like the best, the fastest, the smartest and the prettiest. Instead, uh, follow what I consider an inviolable law of praise for leaders and parents. Do not compliment someone at the expense of others. So what's the best compliment I could get after my talk? It's when someone tells me they are going to start doing one of the positive habits I spoke about. Or they are going to buy my book for a friend who is struggling. The best authentic way to acknowledge someone is to change your behavior. Makes sense. Because I think it's, it's, it's pretty powerful if you actually change your behavior because somebody said something. Or because somebody did something. Or because somebody told you to do it. I guess it just shows like, I believe in you. I think you have you've been honest to me i think i can i can believe in you i think that this makes sense what you're saying i think that it is true what you were saying i guess it really is praise i think it really is so in the working world the pox of comparison praise appears in the form of performance reviews particularly those that's great employees on a numerical scale They may sound harmless enough in theory, however, when managers mistakenly believe that only a finite number of their employees can be A performers, they end up demotivating and stirring up resentment among all those who end up with lower grades. Yeah, like, 
like yeah it just shows you okay you weren't good or the best because because i kind of feel like it is pretty normal for um for people to actually compare themselves with other people even though it's fucking you know it's it's really fucked up it really is like you know you shouldn't do it because why like as i said we're all individuals like yeah you might have been just pretty bad compared to somebody else but who knows this person might have been working on this certain skill for seven years i know from their birthday on to to now like could actually be the case could really be the case and therefore i guess like it's pretty good if you compare yourself to yourself like have i been better like the last time and if not why have there been some factors outside inside factors but let's see so there is a wise old saying comparison is the thief of joy if we really want to enhance others we must stop comparing in a fascinating article, David Rock from the Neuro Leadership Institute posits a few more reasons why performance reviews should be uh, obsolete or obsolete. I'm sorry. Um, he argues that the numerical rating systems used by many com companies don't take into account how work gets done today. Work is happening in teams more than ever, he says, with many people working on multiple teams that are often spread throughout the world. But what people get less praise, but would people get less praise and less constructive feedback if we were to eliminate performance reviews, which was actually the thing that I was thinking about. Like would you actually get any feedback then? You know, would there be anybody coming up to, look, to up to you like, "Okay, you know, you have been good today. You have been bad today." But I understand that it is just something really fucked up. You know, if you're getting some, some performance reviews. Because it's the same thing with marks, I guess. Because you can just be cheating all day long, all year long, and you still get good marks. And it's just the reason why it doesn't say anything. Like, your marks. Your marks, you know, I'm always talking about, like, Marks often show that you have a lot of time to actually learn. And or that you're pretty much... Even not. Like, it doesn't even have to say that, that you're interested in the topic you were good at. Like, maybe it's just been an easy thing for you. Just, you know, to look over it one time and, you know, it went great. But it's, I think, tough to say that... That somebody's smart or somebody is just intelligent or or something like this only because the marks someone got were just really fucking good. Like, for sure, you know, there it also comes up to how it was made. Was it made by studying all day long, every single week, every single day, 24 hours? Or was it made by just, yeah, having a glance on, on everything that we're going through in class and that was it? Like... This shows you like your own f what what you can do, and if you're really caring about what what other people are thinking about you, in terms of your your grades and know your marks, eh, you shouldn't, at my point of view. Like, it's you. Like, yeah, why? But let's see. I'm a little bit feared that I'm not gonna. Oh, <laughs> I will go through the whole one. Um, actually, the opposite is the truth. Of the 30 top companies studied by the Neuro Leadership Institute, managers were actually giving constructive feedback and praise three to four times more often in the absence of performance reviews. Luckily, some companies are embracing this idea. Back in 2011, the management at Adobe called a town hall meeting to discuss what they had found to be the biggest stumbling block to engagement scores and happiness the one to five performance rating system for the employees that did a, that did away with the system completely once they recognized the negative feedback it was having on attracting and keeping good talent even ge which famously pioneered in the idea of ranking employees and then eliminating the bottom 10 percent has largely done away with this outdated system there is an old saying Comparison is the thief of joy, 
if we really want to enhance others, we must stop comparing. Uh, this is excerpted with permission from the new book, Big Potential, How to Transform in the Pursuit of Success Raises Our Achievement, Happiness and Well-Being, from Sean Anker. Uh, pretty interesting, especially because I just pretty recently went through a book which was, or through a TED article, actually it was also a TED article, article which was basically all about the same thing, all about the same thing. Uh, yeah, this was quite it, but to, to resume this, a li- resume, resume, I guess, uh, this a little bit, I don't basically know what I've been talking about, I was so concentrated on actually performing well in this episode, because I wanted to make this episode pretty nice, I really wanted to, and I think it ended up not being as good as it could have been by just going through it, by just having joy going through it, and not... Mm, kind of synth- synthesizing it somehow <laughs> um, but still I think you have learned something at least you because I've read it quite great I guess <laughs> no but but I understand what it is all about like yeah you were the best for me just you know even only you know in terms of actually just being aware that this could hurt other people is a reason why I, I wouldn't do it like, you were the best, it just means, okay, others weren't as good. Like, for example, if you have five friends, and if you're telling one of your friends you were the best of, of them all, it could hurt some of them, or everyone, but but the only person that was just the best, like. Like, yeah, it could actually be the case, but but we don't know. Like, communication is something that's incredibly difficult, you know, not only to understand, but also to to do, to 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 yeah to do like communicating is very very dangerous very very complicated very very everything that's that's quite bad somehow because it really is you know it it, it there are so many ways and factors that could lead uh, your communication to be not good or to to get somehow understand uh, or misunderstood and whatsoever, so there's so many ways, like, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say, I guess I should stop the end, the, the episode, and this is what I'm gonna do, even though I'm not uh, 30 minutes in or something, I'm not gonna waste your time with actually somehow just unnecessary talking, but yeah, uh, I hope you still enjoyed the episode, I hope it, it somehow was great for you at least, but yeah, uh, I wish you the best health, wealth, happiness, and success. And I hope that you're gonna be, that you're gonna think about how you gonna be remembered. And with that being said, I see you, and I thank, thank you from the bottom of my fucking heart for actually watching and listening. I see you.